whatever limits you have here in, in air and on land, the water reveals all. You become connected to something that is so essential to life. When you get in and you start to free dive, you are only limited by your own beliefs and restrictions and limitations. In order to achieve greater depths, it seems like it may be certain barriers in your life that may be creating that barrier. Being able to work through these things, it gives you an opportunity to become one with water. I was getting more interested on how deep I can actually push my limits. I sort of developed a connection with oceans and I just couldn't stop wanting to be in the ocean. I ended up falling in love with the sport of just purely free diving. It's a beautiful bay. The conditions year-round are pristine. It's a protected bay and there's generally no currents ever. This is such a sacred place to the Hawaiians here on the islands, you know, as the city of refuge. My ancestor was the first steward or land manager or in the Hawaiian language, the konohiki of this area. This area runs from the ocean to the mountain. Honoa is a place of refuge discovered by the late Queen Ka'ahumanu, and she ran away from home and came here to Honaunau Beach and hid on a, a big boulder as a shelter hiding from the king and all these warriors is searching for her. And she felt a spiritual belonging. So she dedicated this area as a sacred ground. Today it is known as the Pu'uhonua or Honaunau National Historic Park. We're having our very first freediving competition and it's called the Hawaii Cup of Freediving. The US Freediving Federation is an organization that I started. I felt the need to bring a bigger community element to the sport of freediving to help educate and to drive awareness and help to inspire people to want to learn and to try it. I made a commitment to the existing freedivers here in Hawaii that we should start out by having a competition to help build that community. So I came to Honanao to go diving because I heard about this Thing called church on Sundays. What well, church is from a spiritual standpoint, there's a number of freedivers that have been meeting on the beach here and they meet at 10 o'clock and then they go freediving for a couple of hours and then they have a potluck afterwards. I had discovered all the freedivers here in Kona that gather on Sundays at Honaunau Bay and they welcome whoever. It's special to this bay and to this freediving community. I realized that, man, this is what I've been searching for half my life. It's definitely very religious for us free divers here. My dive family, the, my pod, I call them. I've had so many of the young people come here to Hawaii to dive. I am a world champion free diver. I flew over and came here, met Annabelle and the whole crew here. It's like my dive family. It's really a, a religion to us. I love free diving. I live to free dive, and this is where it's at. Here at now, now this weekend, what happens in the morning, the safety team and the judge teams will come in. They'll start to organize and they'll take the, the apparatus out into the sea and set this up on a number of moorings that we have set up. We'll have a warm-up area. So when the divers do come out on their scheduled times, they'll go to the warm-up zone and then they'll begin to, to get into the relaxed the meditative state to potentially then go into their dive. It's not to recognize who's the, the deepest diver in Hawaii or the United States. 
it's to grow our anticipation and appreciation for the sport. I announced um, a 75 meter no fins dive for the first day of the competition. Looking back, I was maybe a little bit ambitious. I just want to dive. Expectations are really never good going into a competition. You should never expect to perform at your peak or at the best or set new personal best because that can be very taxing uh, on your mind. I was still kind of finding limits. I actually made the depth. On the ascent, I'm coming up and um, you know, it's a tough dive, feeling it. The next thing I remember, of course, I was you know, sitting on the buoy and looking around and thinking, uh, wait a second, didn't I just do a dive though? Or wait, maybe I'm about to do the dive. Did I dream I did a dive? And then Kurt, another um, old friend and the organizer of this comp, uh, a guy who basically I'm trusting with my life, was right in my ear and he's like, hey, I don't know if you need it, but if you want it, there's some oxygen on the boat. And that's when I realized, oh, oxygen on the boat, wait a second. I think I had a blackout. I'm like, did I have, did I have a blackout curtain? He's like, yeah, you were out. People have this perception of death and demise around free diving where, of course, you're holding your breath and breath is the essence of life and this is what gives you life. That's why we free dive in the first place. It's to have fun. There is just a phenomenal experience, just atmosphere there that I haven't felt anywhere else. Everyone was there just trying to help each other out. It was very friendly. To realistically have the confidence to be like, no, I can go all the way to the edge till I'm out of air and unconscious and these people have my back. It's a very beautiful thing to see. I just wanted to create this opportunity for everybody to come together to kind of celebrate this thing that we love so passionately. Out of nowhere, it's just like this rush of just energy and emotion that just comes out. That's the thing about the water. It brings out your feelings and your emotions and what you experience in land, you experience in water and you in challenges to everything in life. It just brings that out and having this competition here and, and being a part of this amazing community of people. It's part of my dream of what I'm trying to do and it was being realized in front of me. And like that's, that's just something that's just super powerful. Having that community is a good way for people to really stay in the community and want to keep the love for free diving. Everybody says, why do you do this every Sunday? Well, because it makes us feel good. Gives you that connection, gives you that feeling of being one with water. It gives you an entirely different perspective and you approach life differently. If we don't have that, and we don't preserve and conserve this environment, we don't have life ultimately.